Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Man, I got a ton of info I want to share with you today, and, and some of this info is information that will make sense to you. Some of this information may not make sense to you, and that's okay. My role here is to expose you to investing correctly in real estate assets, and not just any real estate assets. I mean, you know, there's an article I read that said something about there's a anticipated retail sector pricing thing where assets may be coming on the market at distressed prices. At Lifestyles Unlimited, we'll, we'll read those headlines and we'll go, it's not for us. And the reason we do that is because we're not specialized in investing in retail assets. In other words, retail assets are, are assets where you own the property, you've done the improvements, you provide space for, well, in this case, it's not residents, it's actually business tenants who come in, they occupy that space, they pay you rent based on, you know, however you work out your lease agreements. And the thought process right now is that because retail, well, it, it gets smashed during the lockdown. I mean, it's still getting smashed in areas. So the problem there is that the lease holders or the people that are providing the property to the leasees, the leasees aren't making revenue streams. So it's, it's just kind of a jumbled mess. And it, and it all boils down to the fact that when the economy slows down, there's an impact on that market. So those real estate assets that are retail based are being distressed. So the question I have for you is this. Should you buy those properties? And I would tell you this, you better make sure you know what you're doing. Just because it seems like that property may be on sale, you have to have a thorough understanding of how you will operate that property. So just buying something on sale, in, as far as real estate goes, isn't always a great alternative. And what I'm going to talk about today is buying multifamily properties. That's the one segment of commercial real estate that we believe in, that we invest in. And we do it because we know that everybody needs a place to live. With a very rare exception, everybody in this country needs a place to hang their hat, a place to call home. And what we do as members of Lifestyles Unlimited is we provide that good, clean, functional workforce housing to a demographic that really requires it. And in doing so, we're implementing a business plan, a business plan that is well tailored to the asset and to the marketplace that we're penetrating. I know I just hit you with a lot of stuff, but hang in there with me. So I'm going to tell you the story of James and Kimberly. Now, James and Kimberly are Lifestyles Unlimited members. And back in 2019, what they did was they acquired a multifamily apartment community in San Antonio. It's a 28 unit apartment community and they paid $92,000 per door for that apartment community. All in all, that property traded when they bought that property at $92,000 a door, that sales price was $2,576,000. So my question to you is this, is that a good price? Was that a good deal? What do you know about the real estate markets? What have you done to educate yourself on those marketplaces? More so, what have you done to educate you on the process of correctly investing in those types of assets? Because there are people that invest into real estate assets and they do it for the wrong reasons. They don't know any better. They have a limited education that has not necessarily exposed them to all of the components of owning real estate. 
whether it's single family, whether it's multifamily, whether it's all those other types of commercial real estate, that's a recipe for disaster. That's why at Lifestyles Unlimited, we're a real estate investor, education and mentoring company. Those are the services that we provide to our membership base. And by doing so, we help our members understand that by correctly investing in real estate, and the key word there is correctly investing in real estate, you can get significant returns on those investments, which in turn will reposition your life financially. In other words, it will create passive streams of income. It will create opportunities to increase your capital. And what I'm going to talk about today is James and Kimberly and what they did with this property that they bought for $92,000 a door. Now, some of you might be thinking, wow, that's a steal in San Antonio. Others of you might be thinking that you paid too much, but you have to understand what the potential for that property was and why they were willing to pay $92,000 per door in June of 2019 to acquire this asset. This asset had great bones. It had great potential. The thing was built in 2007. It had a real snarky history, and we're going to get into some of that stuff today. But here's the takeaway. Their three-year projection on returns to not only themselves, but the passive investors that came alongside them 124% return on investment, meaning not only did they get their initial investment back, they made even more money. And when we come back from the break, I'm going to break all of this down for you. So stick around. I got great stuff for you. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. So we're going to talk a little bit about some fellow Lifestyles Unlimited members. Their names are James and Kimberly, and I think it's best to start off with giving you some background on who these people are. They are typical Americans just like you and I. I mean, James has worked a very long career in the semiconductor field. He's he's spent 35 years working in that particular field. He's very good at what he does, and he enjoys what he's doing, but he also realized that what he was doing for retirement was not penciling out for him. And as he got closer to retirement, think about 35 years in a career field. So, you know, do the math, figure out what age group this person might be in. What he was doing was ineffective. So he realized that something needed to change. Now, his beautiful wife, Kimberly, she is currently a real estate professional. So let's unpack that. What does that mean? Does she sell real estate for a living? Is that what a real estate professional is? No. She is a real estate professional by definition of IRS code. In other words, if you are a real estate professional, somebody who is engaged in the ownership of real estate assets and the management of those assets, and you can contribute or prove to the IRS that you spend 750 hours a year doing that, which, you know, if you do the math, works out to be about 15 hours a week, you have the ability to write off all depreciation that your assets produce, which insulates your income from taxation. There's a lot of benefits for doing it. But prior to that, Kimberly spent about 20 years in human resource management. I mean, she was one of those directors for a big firm. So she was one of those people that when HR calls you to the office, she's that face you were probably looking at, you know, or actually the face behind the face because she's the person you really didn't want to talk to. But she did 20 years and she realized, you know what? The same as James, they were putting money aside and they were buying some real estate. They actually owned some single family rental property prior to becoming members at Lifestyles Unlimited. But they were not satisfied with the returns that they were receiving. So once they became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, they realized that some of the inefficiencies that they had been creating for themselves in the single-family mode, well, they fixed those things up. 
And they also realized that they could invest in multifamily properties. See, we teach you how to do that. It is a modality that you can follow. And multifamily really has a better opportunity to create wealth for you because you're in control of how that property is valued. Unlike single family where the market dictates pricing, in multifamily, no, it's a business unit. It is an actual business unit that is traded as a business unit. It's valued as a business based on the income streams it produces. And therefore, that drives value of the property. So let me just throw out a little tidbit of information for you. One of the things that they liked about this particular property that made them go forward and buy this property was that the, the property was commanding certain rents in the marketplace. And those certain rents really weren't very high compared to the potential that those rents could provide. Now, what am I getting at? All right. When they took over this property, this property was renting. Now, they're all three-bedroom, two-bath apartments. The, the entire complex is the same floor plan, 1,100 square feet. It's really a nice layout. But the property was only receiving rents of eight ninety five dollars per month. Now, based on their analysis, they realized that there were other similar apartment communities in the area, one that was about in the same condition as the property when they took over this particular 28 unit. And that one was getting nine ninety five dollars per month. So by not doing anything, there was potential to raise rents $100 a month. But they also figured out that there was a nicer property, similar in age and location, but appearance was much better. The interior units had been upgraded. They were more modern. They were nicer than the original product. And that particular community was commanding rents of $1,200 per month. And what they realized that even that $1,200 a month price point given what they were planning to do to this property, they would be able to actually charge more. And their, their average rents right now are twelve ninety five dollars per month. So when you think about that, I mean, you're basically jumping from $900 a month to a gross potential rent of about $1,300 a month. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that hey, if you're increasing value on that property by $400 per month times 28 units, that's a significant upside potential to this property. And that's part of the reason they went after this property because it had so much upside potential. If you understand the background on this particular property, it's got a weird past. I mean, this thing was like built in 2007, but for whatever reason, it just never produced what it had to do. I, I remember Kimberly saying that the first resident to move into that property based on the historical data that they had was in 2012. So you have to ask yourself, okay, why was something built in 2007 and why did it sit vacant for a while? Well, if you remember your history, real estate took a big ouch back in that 2007, 2008 timeframe. So it's very possible that whoever built that property built it at a time point when real estate was very overvalued and was actually prepared for a significant challenge. And they may not have been able to position that property. So somebody came along around 2012, acquired the property, started putting residents in the property, but they really didn't do anything to the property. And over time, properties, well, they, they age, they do age. In 2019, when they decided to look at this property, they saw a lot of potential. And now here's the interesting thing. The person selling them the property was somebody who was flipping real estate. That's right. Flippers exist in multifamily communities too. And it's not just in regular houses, it's multifamily communities. And, you know, the flipper did some work, but the work that they did was not to the standard that James and Kimberly understood would be the most marketable in that particular neighborhood. So they also understood that they were going to probably have to put in between five and $5,500 per door to really do the renovations on that property. Because they also knew that the flipper did a lot of cosmetic stuff, but did not, did not do any work on a lot of the functional systems. Now they figured this out when they toured the property and did a thorough inspection. When we come back from the break, I'm going to give you some more of the insider information on this particular deal and how wonderful of a property it is for them and their investors. Stick around.
morning. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So I'm going to get into some of the details of this deal because I want you to understand that they were able to invest their hard-earned money in a different way. And when I say they, I'm talking about Kimberly and James. They were able to invest their money in a different way, a way that was completely different than what they had been doing for so many years. See, James and Kimberly were doing what you were probably doing, what I was doing. James and Kimberly spent a long time period of their life doing what their financial planner told them to do, which is to keep saving money into some type of retirement account and to invest that money maybe in the stock market. And then if, you know, if the investments are going good and the markets are going good to anticipate an eight to 10% return per annum on their money. And that by doing that, they would be programmed to build up this giant pile of money that they could live off of when they got to retirement. But here was the problem. When they looked at the big pile of money that they had and they figured out when they wanted to retire and the amount of income they needed to replace, and they also had a, a fairly good idea of how long they thought they were going to live in retirement, they had a huge problem. That pile of money was not big enough. That pile of money needed to get bigger. And they started investing in, in real estate assets, but they weren't getting good returns because nobody had educated them on the correct way to invest in real estate assets. That's part of the reason they came to Lifestyles Unlimited, because a friend of theirs was a member and said, dude, you really need to check this out. So they checked it out and they realized, you know what, this is a good thing. We need to get going with this. So they remedied the problems that they had with their single family investments. And then they went to work identifying and acquiring multifamily. So this is the first multifamily deal that they took down, and they bought this thing in June of 2019. Now, the property had some issues. I mean, they bought it from a flipper. Now, why is a flipper messing around with the 28-unit apartment complex? Who cares? Okay, the flipper did some cosmetic things, but as they got into the nuts and bolts of the property, they realized that there were, there were some fundamental issues with the property. But before I tell you what those issues are, let me tell you what they liked about the property because there were, there were some nice things about this property that really made them go, hmm, this might be the right one for us. The complex was newer, so deferred maintenance wouldn't be so bad. I mean, this thing was built in 2007, so you know, 12 years can put put a hurting on on buildings, but not as much of a hurting as maybe 40 years could put on it. Like I mentioned, there really weren't any residents in this property until 2012, as far as they can tell. So the wear and tear on the units was minimal. Now the the property didn't have some of the issues that older properties have, like you know, one time boilers and chillers were were used for air conditioning and heating. There were master systems, and this property didn't do that. This property was all electric with all of the units having their own separate meters. The property was all three bedroom, two bath units, meaning they were designed specifically for families. And families have a tendency to stay in place longer so you have less turnover. The property was located on a major roadway and it fed into a very good high school. All the units had washer dryer hookups in them and there was no laundry room on the property. So the residents could provide their own washers and dryers. This property was very clearly poorly managed because when they, they sat down to do all the financial reviews, which is part of what you do when you acquire these properties, there was a bunch of information missing. I mean, there were just a lot of blank spaces. Now, the, the property had a fire sprinkler system. And, you know, initially that helped to reduce the overall insurance costs, but it's more of a feature for the residents as opposed to for the owners. And like I mentioned earlier in the show, the rents were grossly under market. I mean, when they did their rent survey, they realized that they could move those rents from eight ninety five, what was being commanded by that particular property to almost thirteen hundred dollars. That is a significant upside potential on rents. Now, let's talk about those things that they didn't like. All of the air conditioners on that property, and this gets back to the flipper did cosmetic stuff. Every single one of those air conditioners on that property 
were original air conditioners and there were no service records. Those air conditioning systems were not properly maintained, so that was something they were going to have to deal with. Again, they had a difficult time evaluating the property because all the records, the record keeping was non-existent. So I, I don't know how that owner is going to explain to the IRS what they did, but that's not our problem, is it? There was a significant safety hazard at the entrance to the community that had gone undealt with. And that was something they needed to deal with. And ironically, even though the property, its layout was set up for families, the overall feel of the community was just that it was, it was not family friendly. These are some things that they needed to address. Now, I will tell you this. They worked very closely with their mentors and the operations consultants that, that are available to us at Lifestyles Unlimited to help build the, the long-term plan to get this thing going. They also followed one of our primary rules at Lifestyles Unlimited, which is this. Keep it simple. Do not over-improve the units. Get the units to where they need to be to be competitive in the marketplace. But don't turn the whole place into the Taj Mahal, because if you over-improve the property, it's going to have a dramatic impact on your ability to earn money. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. And here's the other thing. They kept a careful eye on their expenses while they worked to increase their revenue streams. That is a fundamental concept that we teach you at Lifestyles Unlimited. From the very beginning of our education, we talk about that consistently because that's really what it's all about. Let me tell you some of the things that they didn't do when they first took over the property. The first thing they did not do was immediately increase rents. And they couldn't because essentially for the residents that were there that had leases in place, they had to honor those leases as long as those residents were in compliance with the lease. Now, some people weren't on leases. Some people did not want uh, to pay an additional rent. So they were willing to leave and that allowed them the ability to improve those particular units and put them back on the market. The other thing they didn't do, they did not let any maintenance requests go longer than 24 hours. Maintenance requests were a priority for them, which communicates to the residents that they're important. And there's some other things that they didn't do, but what I really want to talk about are the things that they did do. Because when they got to work on this property and they started spending about $5,200 per door to renovate the entire complex, the results not only aesthetically were beautiful, but financially outstanding. And I'll give you the numbers when we come back. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. So I'm going to get into the numbers of this deal because I want you to understand that real estate has the ability to accelerate your returns on your investment. That's why we do it. That's prima facie ev evidence as to why we are not invested in the stock market, why we choose real estate as our vehicle of choice. Real estate has the ability to pay us five different ways. I mean, technically six ways when we talk about multifamily because of the ability to force appreciation, meaning because the property is valued as a business unit by increasing the revenue streams of that business by positioning the rental units to a certain place where they command better rents, you're able to increase cash flows. You're able to increase net operating income. You're able to do a lot of things that produce the returns that we get in real estate. So let's get back to the, uh, the root numbers. They bought this property for $92,750 per door. And we opened the show, I said, I don't know, is that a good price? What do you think? It's kind of irrelevant because what you can buy it for is one piece of the equation. It's what can you transform it into that will position it 
to be traded at a higher price later. See, it's it's understanding the in-between there, and we teach you this stuff. It's understanding that in-between that makes you money. Now, they realized it was going to be about $5,200 per door to do the rehab. Now, this particular property, a lot of the rehab dollars really went to the exterior of the units. I mean, the interiors needed to be upgraded. I mean, there were things that needed to be done, but they didn't have to spend all $5,000 on the interiors. Really, what needed to be done was the transformation of the exterior. Because when they bought this thing, if you drove up to this thing and looked at it, every building was painted baby poop brown. You heard me correctly. And you know what? It just looked drab. And, and like I said, it was a complex or a community is what I really should. Well, at that time, it was a complex. But what they did is they transformed it into a community that attracted families. The asset was designed to attract families. Three bedroom, two bath, right? I mean, that's a typical family of four people, five people, whatever. There was no place to enjoy being a family on this property. So one of the things they did was they spent some dollars to clean up the exterior, to invest in the landscaping, to actually produce a community area with, with a place for children to play, an actual play area. So you don't have to go down the street to the park. You can play right there in your community, which is a part of your home. Now, the roofs needed some work. I mean, they were older, you know, I and mean, think about it. The thing was built in 2007. So, you know, roofs were about 12 years old at that time period. There was some minor work that needed to be done. But a lot of it had to do with tree trimming, fencing, repainting all of the exteriors to make it a warm, inviting community. And they did a few other things that helped to improve the operations. But think about it. We're talking about buying a property at around $93,000 per door, dropping another $5,000 per door into the property to improve it. So what are we at now? Almost $98,000 a door? I mean, we're almost at $100,000 per door. Let's put it in perspective. Could you buy a single family home for $100,000? There are some markets out there where you, you can buy those properties. But here's the thing. They're essentially buying 28 homes for less than $100,000. So when you put it in that perspective, you kind of think, hmm, well, a nice single family home, three bedroom, two bath in the San Antonio market, maybe, I don't know, $150,000, $200,000. It just depends, right? So let's get into those numbers though. When they acquired the property, they needed to put some money down. I think if I recall the numbers correctly, it was just shy of about $800,000. The total cash out of pocket to acquire this asset, to pay the closing costs, to do some of the, the rehab things that needed to be done, was $1.13 million. So in other words, they needed a bucket of money, $1,130,000, to do this deal. Now, they didn't use all of their own money. They did put a good portion of their own money into this deal. But because they were trained on how to correctly syndicate real estate to other members of Lifestyles Unlimited, they brought other members along which is a really good thing for the other members because the other members get the opportunity to participate in the returns that this property is producing. So let me talk about some of these returns. Everything boils down to cash flow and equity. I mean, that's, that's really the two things that you look at when it comes to a multifamily investment. Now, equity is increased in multiple ways and cash flow is affected based on the income streams of the property minus the expenses. So you have something called net operating income, and then you pay the debt service and any other below the line costs. And what is left over is the cash flow that the property produces. At the end of year one, that property produced a cash flow of about $145,500, which was distributed to all the investors in the property. After one year of ownership, keep in mind, they bought it in June of 2019. So in the end of May of 2020, right at the height of the, the lockdown, right at the height of coronavirus, this asset was producing almost 13% cash on cash returns. Meaning if you were a investor in this deal, and let's say you, you put in $50,000, this property would have returned to you in cash over $6,400. If you had put in $100,000 in the deal, you, you would double that. You'd get about $12,000, almost $900. So that's important. In 2021, let's fast forward to as of the other day when we were discussing this property. 
they were in the process of doing a cash out refinance on this property. In other words, they were positioning the asset to take a portion of money out. And essentially, now the, the cash out refinance hasn't closed, but when it does, it will produce about a 44% return of original principal to all of the investors. So if you had put, let's say, $100,000 in the deal, you would get a little over $44,000 of your principal back, and you could take that money and go invest it into another asset, as opposed to having that money just sitting in the property. That property is still continuing to develop great cash flow. It's returning, as of now, almost 14% cash flow right before the cash out refinance. So not only are you going to get $44,000, you're still going to get almost $14,000 in cash flow coming from this property if you had $100,000 invested in the deal. Once the cash out refinance is done, usually because you have more debt service on the property, the property will produce less cash flow because you have more debt because you took equity out of the property. It's just the way things are. It's the way the math works. But they're still on track to produce almost 15% cash flow because remember, they've got a strategic plan to renovate all of these units. They didn't do all 28 units at once. They did what they could based on availability and then they put these units back into service. And then as residents decide to either leave or upgrade to the newer units, then they're improving those. So there's still units that need to be improved, which will increase that cash flow. So here's the thing. Let's fast forward one year. Let's just say we're a year and a, and a month or two in the future. Here's the total projection. And I want you to look at this as if you're a passive investor in the deal. In other words, you met James and Kimberly, you invested in this deal with them back in 2019. And this is what your $100,000 return would do for you at the end of three years. It would have produced in liquid cash, almost $86,000. That's an almost 86% return on your investment over a three year period, just on the cash. But you still have equity in that deal. And as they continue to drive this particular asset, it will continue to increase income streams while managing those expenses, thereby positioning the net operating income to be even more attractive to other investors that are looking for, say, a 6% return cash on cash, because there are investors out there that think that is totally fine. They want something that's already renovated. They don't want to deal with the headaches. It's just the way it is. I will tell you this, James and Kimberly have changed the direction of their life, and you can do the same. What I implore you to do is go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. Listen to us when we talk about how we can help you change the direction of your life. And remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.